using the hips in the golf swing is something that we all want to do to create a lot of club head speed and be able to hit those really booming drives, be able to outdrive our friends. But I find a lot of players struggle to use the hips properly. It actually has to do with how your legs or your upper leg and knees specifically are angled. If they're not angled in the correct position of the swing, then we're gonna have a really tough time opening those hips. Let me go over the right way and the wrong way to do this, get you to open up those hips, and then we're gonna track that using my flight scope to boost the speed. Let's go ahead and get started. Now be sure to click that subscribe button. I've got tons of great content coming out this year. I don't want you to miss out on that, and you have to be subscribed to get notified when we release our new videos. Also, click that thumbs up, thumbs up button. That really helps us out, and post your comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. All right, so this is a series of videos I'm doing, kind of showing what I use my flight scope with. So for those of you who aren't familiar with this, this is called a flight scope X3. This is their newest model of radar. Pretty expensive machine. These will run you about eighteen thousand dollars. This has a, a basically sends out a radio waves or electromagnetic waves that bounce off of my golf club, the ball, everything that's happening right here through contact. So as I swing through this golf ball, it's tracking how my club head is moving, whether my face is open or closed, whether it's moving to the right or to the left, up or down. It's really tracking it within, within a degree of what's happening. So really, really precise. It's also tracking what we'll be talking about in this video, <clears throat> excuse me, is how fast this club head is moving. So what it does is it finds the center of this club head, what's called the geometric center, right in the middle of this club head, if you can imagine that, and then it tracks how that moves through space to get my club head speed. That's what we're gonna really be focusing on and showing how using the hips properly can make this happen a little bit easier. It also tracks the ball as it flies through there and gives me some really cool numbers on ball spin, uh, launch angles, all that kind of stuff, and how fast the ball leaves the face. So we'll be looking at some of that when we're talking about this drill, the correct and incorrect way of doing this. Without further ado, let's go ahead and hit some swings here. Let's go ahead and cast from the top, show how to improperly use these hips, and let's see what my numbers are on my flight scope. So in this swing, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just turn off my body. And what happens with players that tend to cast, they're not rotating the hips and the body enough. Then they're having to use all hands and arms. And we're starting to throw this club to try to gain some speed with this club head right from the top of the swing. Our body, being good athletes, we understand that if we don't use our body, we're going to have to use our hands and arms to try to get some speed. And typically people will do that by getting a cast. So in this one, I'm not gonna have my body working very much, my legs and hips moving very much, and let's have a look at what numbers this spits out for me. <laughs> Tough to swing at all. I almost just completely topped that one. I have the toughest time making contact when I cast because I just can't feel where the club head is. I know you guys probably have the same experience when you're casting or coming over the top. That's one good side note here. I think everybody's a lot better athletes than they realize they are. A lot of times somebody with a cast, just being able to get the ball in the fairway, being able to hit it in the fairway at all with any amount of speed is really tough to do. When I try to cast in my videos, when I purposely try to get the cast, I can't hit the golf ball a decent shot two times in a row. We saw that one, I almost hit it maybe 100 yards or something along those lines, and I barely made contact on the face whatsoever. My club head speed went all the way down to 90 miles an hour. That's a little bit less than the average male club head speed. So maybe you're swinging 90 right now and you have the ability to swing over 100, 110, 115. You don't really know until we get the proper technique and find out. So we saw there 90 miles an hour club head speed. That's gonna be the main number I'm looking at here with my flight scope and what it's telling me I'm doing. So we're gonna see if we can get that a little bit better. My distance, my carry distance was only 126. Obviously that was not a good shot. And my ball speed, see if I can find that on here was 118 miles an hour. That means whenever I hit this ball, it left the face at 118 miles an hour. Not really that great. What was I doing wrong in that swing that caused me to hit that, to do the cast? And how can I fix that if I wanna do this properly? What I find is when players keep their knees facing forward, so if I make this incorrect swing, as I start my downswing, I keep my knee, you can imagine a line kinda of coming out of this, my knee stays in front of me and it's almost angled back in as I rotate through. That turns off my lower body and I have to use all this arm speed and hand and wrist speed to try to accelerate the club head. And it doesn't work very well. What I wanna be doing, as soon as I start down, I wanna feel like I keep my hips a little bit back. If I slide my hips forward, I'm not gonna be able to rotate. I wanna keep my hips a little bit back. And my first thing I wanna do is get my knees going forward. So my right knee is gonna be angled forward 
you can imagine a laser kind of shooting out of that, it's going forward. And my left knee is gonna be angled forward. So if you look at my upper femur, or this angle of my leg, it's pointed out here. The reason that makes a big difference is I have to use my feet and pressure in the ground to rotate my hips. And when I get my left leg angled forward, that puts in a, me, my legs in a position to where when I push out, that rotates me open. That's my body getting in a good position to be able to rotate really well and use my hips. My right foot does the same thing. As that knee goes forward, my right foot kind of gets angled out and now I can push into the ground to get my right hip rotating forward. And that helps with your club head speed. What I want you to do is a few practice swings here. Go to the top of the swing. And the first thing I want you to do is feel like your hips stay back a little bit. You open up your legs, your, your upper legs, and you get your knees forward from there and keep the club back and from the inside. So I don't want to do this and start coming over the top and over the top casting type motion. I want to have that club from the inside. And then from there, I'm going to rotate everything through with my hips and really come to that good full finish as I rotate through to the full finish there. And that's going to help me to get a little bit more lag. It's also going to help me to keep my hips moving. So watching this video, you'll see my hips rotate much better in this one, and I'm able to get a lot higher club head speed, or hopefully get a lot higher club head speed. My last club head speed was 90, 126 carry. <laughs> I think I'll be able to beat that one. Let's see what I can do here. There we go. Killed that one right down the middle of the fairway. Not gonna be able to do a ton better than that one. And we'll take a look at the slow motion video here in a second. My club head speed went up to 115, hit that one dead solid. My carry distance was 311, pretty good. I can't do much better than that. My total distance was 325. So I added about 25 miles an hour club head speed. I carried the ball, you know, whatever it was, 200 yards farther, <laughs> something like that. And my ball speed before was, I believe, 118. And now my ball speed went up to 167.5. So almost 170 ball speed, that's pretty solid. So the key takeaways there are, number one, you may have a faulty technique that's slowing you down. You may be a much better athlete than you realize. You may have a lot more club head speed left in the bag if we let our lower body and our hips and our legs angle in the right way and use those legs in the, in the, the correct way. And number two, we got to get those legs pointing forward. If my legs are pointing back, there's no way I can really push into the ground and rotate. If I get my legs kind of moving this way, now I can really rotate my hips and gain a lot of speed. Now, I don't want to stop there. Now, one thing we talked about in this video is starting that downswing, getting the legs in the proper position. But there's something else that's going to make this a lot easier. The first thing is completing that backswing, getting that good turn going back. Once I really get loaded up in the backswing, now I have tons of time to start to open up my body. If I never make that turn going back, a lot of times you'll rush from the top. You won't get the lower body engaged like you want to. The second piece there is finishing that and coming all the way through to a good full finish. Now, if I can make that good full turn in the backswing, I can make that good full finish, the middle tends to happen a lot easier, a lot more easily. That's what we call the power turn in the top speed golf system. That's completing your backswing and completing your finish. That makes everything a lot more fluid, a lot more powerful, and a whole lot more fun to play golf when you're doing the power turn correctly. One of my best power turn videos I have coming up here in just one second, I have a preview of that. Just click the card that pops up on your screen or the link down below in the description. You'll get instant access to that video. You'll start making that power turn. If you can pair that up with what we talked about here today, you are really gonna have some great club head speed. Let's go and get started. The correct technique, we can all hit it with really good distance without a lot of muscular effort. And it all starts out, the very first thing you have to do is get a good powerful turn to load up the body. And it's not only in golf, but in all sports we have to rotate the body. At least 90 degrees with the shoulders as you swing to the top. Preferably, we can go even a little bit past 90 to really get loaded up. That's gonna allow us to have a lot of power. So. We don't just have to look at golf for this. Let's actually look at other sports. They're rotating their body, then they're coming forward. So we have to get that load. We have to get this big shoulder turn to be able to create power in the golf swing. So in this series of videos, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. That's one of the first keys to getting power. And we're all gonna get at least a 90 degree turn, if not more than that. I think you'll be surprised at what you can do. So let's go ahead and get started with the next series of videos. And I'm gonna show you how to get this big, powerful turn. 
All right, guys, so before we go, let's take a look at this in action with some of the top pros. Now, here we're looking at Adam Scott, and you're going to see as he rotates to the top, good full shoulder turn. This is pretty typical of what I see with the top pros, a little past 90. Those guys are working on their flexibility, so sometimes they can get to 100 or even 110 degrees.